shalom, damn it. This is Rabbi Sal Solomon with a rabbinical reflection for the beginning of autumn 2024. Whether secretly, guiltily, worriedly, or flag out joyously, every Jew is having a big who's your daddy moment right now. After nearly a year of rooting out the Gaza animals of October 7th, while trading fire with the opportunistic vermin of southern Lebanon, Israel needed a shot in the arm. They got it by giving hundreds of our enemies a pow in the pants. All these terrorists across Lebanon and Syria had been communicating through pagers, I guess because their mommies wouldn't let them have cell phones like big boy psychopaths. Well, those Israeli-made pagers were programmed to detonate, and detonate they did. The Arabs should have known something was up when they opened the box, and the first thing they saw was para explotar Marque el Ocho. These paramilitary Islamists suffered hundreds of injuries to faces, eyes, hands, genitalia. Now they look as grotesque as they behave. And yes, a couple of civilians and children died. I guess up in heaven, they can mingle with all the dead Jews from the music festival. And yes, we're all anxious about this new brand of warfare and what method of retribution the Islamists will select. But from the Yom Kippur attack to 9-11 to the Supernova Festival, our nemeses have never displayed a hint of human decency. So, no, you think this long-deserved punishment will suddenly turn them evil? I say, now is the time to be proactive and invent some poison prayer mats. But I can't let this fantastic reminder of Mossad ingenuity and Jewish toughness go by without a little more levity. My friends, I bring you jokes, twisted punchlines for my Israeli brethren who get knocked down, but punch right back. <clears throat> Why, let me try this this way. Ah, oh, that's better. Why are Israeli pagers a bargain? You get a lot of bang for the buck. Do the Syrians listen to Spotify? No, they carry a boom box. Did Mossad make a list of all of their targets? Yes, and they paged through it. What was the most impressive thing Israel pulled off? Well, they pulled off dicks, lips, fingers. Did Hezbollah leader Ibrahim Akil enjoy his time in Beirut? Oh, he had a blast. Did you know? that Akil had blue eyes. Yeah, one blew this way, one blew that. Okay, that was an old one, but this next one is mine. Why are the Lebanese such fine pool players? Well, their balls go straight into the pockets. Oh, I can't get through this. Their balls go straight into the pockets. Now we're doing it. At what, at what part of relay races do Lebanese men excel? The handoff. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. There's, yes, we have more of these. We do. Why are Syrian generals feeling so lonely? They lost all their privates. Ahem, ahem. I did not write this next one, but I have to share it. What wireless carrier were the Lebanese using? A T N T. <laughs> right, I need more noise. Hold on. I need extra noise now. All right. Why was the Mossad attack like Nazis euthanizing the mentally ill? Well, they made all the nuts disappear. Uh-oh. Okay, I need a new one of these, I think. Ah. What Broadway musical just came to Syria? Mame. What Italian movie just came to Lebanon? Blow up. Why shouldn't Lebanese men drink? After they feel a little buzz, they fly to pieces. I like 
That's right. What will Syrian men use to avoid COVID? <laughs> Wrist sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just get worse, ladies and gentlemen, they do. Oh, wrist sanitizer. Okay, how can you tell when a Lebanese man is gay? His vibrator shoots up his ass. <laughs> what do Syrian genitals have in common with an English breakfast? Bangers and mash. Because <laughs> they bang and mash. Okay, what? I love this one. What do a Lebanese man's testicles have in common? <laughs> no, I should have <laughs> uh, What do a Lebanese man's testicles have in common with the Flintstones? <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, this is why I don't don't go on stage anymore. Bam, bam. All right. What's the funniest thing about all these Hezbollahs being killed or disabled? Everything. Happy almost New Year, my friends. This has been a rabbinical reflection from Rabbi Saul Solomon, Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. Time to turn the page.